Hello, my name is Patrick Lynch. I'm a partner at Lynch Architects in London, and I'm the uh, publisher and uh, one of the editors of Canal Side Press, which is based in our office in Hackney. Um, I'm going to um, talk to you about a, a book which is about to come out um, on the 18th of November, uh, um, a part of the city, the work of Neve Brown architect. Um, and I'm going to attempt now to share my screen with you. Um, yeah, so here is the cover of the book, um, which some of you may recognize is a photograph of the Alexander Road estate that um, Neve Brown completed as the project architect for Camden um, Borough Council. Um, a, a recent photograph, in fact, showing it um, as a verdant garden. The, the publishing house came about um, uh, through initially us um, deciding to publish a, a magazine, which is published twice a year, the Journal of Civic Architecture. Um, and along the way, we also started to publish um, some books. Um, and um, there are two series of books, uh, primarily um, a collection of paperbacks, um, which we've given the, the title Reflection in Action. And um, Paul Shepard, you may know, is an architectural writer, uh, architect and, and teacher and critic. Um, Graham Brooker is the um, professor of interior architecture at the World College of Art. Alex Niven is, is also an academic. He teaches English literature at um, Newcastle University. But he's also a poet and, like Graham, probably used to be quite a successful rock star. And these are kind of books, the reflection being the, 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 the key word, which deal with um, the poetic aspects of the architectural imagination. Um, the, Alex's poems, uh, uh, Paul's kind of prose poems, as he calls them, aphorisms, etc. A kind of release from mainstream academic publishing. And the other um, the series of which the Neve Brown book will be the third publication is Modern Architecture and Reflection. Um, so called because I think we have sufficient distance from the, if you like, Star Wars of the 1980s, whereby uh, people were either died in the war modernists or, or, or radical postmodernists. And, and it, it occurred to me um, when I was writing my PhD, parts of which deal with the late churches of um, Sigurd Leverance and, um, and then the publication that came out of that civic ground, which deals with Alvaro Caesar's work, that there are certain architects whose work is almost impossible to categorize in the taxonomic tradition of um, British art historians writing about architecture as a succession of styles, um, e.g. Um, John Mounier, um, whose uh, work with Barry Gaston and Brett Anderson on, on the Bowell collection uh, finished in 1982, a few years after um, Alexander Road. Uh, it's very, very difficult to classify. Um, and through a friendship which developed with John um, based on attempts to try to protect the Bowell collection in Glasgow from uh, uh, radical change, which had been was proposed to be carried out without consultation, properly with the, with the design team. The term uh, intricacy evolved. That's the thing which John thinks characterizes his work and, and is important for architecture generally. Um, and the other architect, it's a similar period, um, we're talking people kind of working in the 1960s and 70s as Robin Walker in Ireland, um, a partner in Scott Tanner Walker Architects. Um, and, uh, like John, also a teacher and, uh, and a writer and a kind of philosopher, a member of a, uh, an elite cultural scene, uh, very good friends with Seamus Heaney and a number of artists. And so what my research started to, to reveal is that the relationship between academia and practice and between theory and theory as an academic subject and theory as the practice of architecture is, is not as clear cut as certain historians of modernism would lead us to believe, i.e. that the accusation that modernism was technocratic, uh, largely unthinkingly committed to progress and technologically defined progress and, and statist and top-down and, and paying no heed to the traditional um, typologies of 
and urban grain of cities is, is, is absolutely not true. And it's especially not true in the case of Neve Brown, who whilst he was working at Camden Council was teaching regularly at Cornell and Princeton, um, engaged as a, as a writer and uh, also conversely, one of the things that we, we've revealed is that, is that serious academics such as Bob Maxwell, who, who at the time was teaching at UCL, um, would, would write for the Architectural Review. Um, similarly, um, his colleague at UCL, Raina Bannon, would, would had a column in New Society. So, so what we're uncovering here, I think, is a kind of secret history of, 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 of late modernist architecture. Late modernist is a term that's used in literary criticism to describe poetry of people like Seamus Heaney. Um, and it, it seems to be quite a useful uh, term to describe architecture, which is um, Con continues to be committed to the ethos of the modern project, i.e. socialist values of, of the welfare state, but highly critical of its um, technocratic top-down um, methodologies often. So for example, Neve's early work includes this row of, if you like, neo-Georgian concrete um, townhouses in Camden for himself and um, a series of other architects, including Michael and Matty. Hopkins. Um, and Brown was also, um, he was polemicizing his work, he was, he was writing about others' work, including Patrick Hodgkinson and James Gowan. And uh, so this is from architecture um, design. And you can see there's, there's a kind of a really interesting period because you've got the kind of rediscovery of Giles Gilbert Scott's work by Gary and Stamp, um, people writing about Alvarado. Um, yeah, the beginnings of a kind of green technological debate uh, with the, the, the chapter on alternative technology and Neve's, Neve's, Neve's work. Um, what, what our research revealed also is that, the, is that the end of the 1970s and, and the, the emergence of the Thatcherite um, regime and the cessation of uh, funding for um, local authorities' capacity to build social housing, um, it, it, it obviously scarred a generation of, of, of modernists and, and led certain postmodernist critics to saying that it was dead. So the destruction of Pritigrew in the United States and Ronan Point in, in England and the kind of sense of the failures of, of this top-down status welfare state project um, isn't, isn't really the whole story. Um, in fact, as Owen Hathley revealed in his recent excellent study of socialist municipalities in London, Red Metropolis, um, the attack was coming from the left as well. So the, the, the new left um, uh, made up of figures like John McDonnell, um, Jeremy Corbyn, um, and uh, Ken Livingstone, who in fact was the housing officer at, at, at Camden Council, um, weren't particularly interested in modern architecture. Um, they were part of the generation inspired by Jane Jacobs' resistance to modernism, in fact, in New York. And, that, and because at that point in London's history, it was largely empty. There were lots of squats, lots of existing Victorian and Georgian houses that could be occupied. Um, Ken took it very strongly against um, his own council's uh, decision to build Alexander Road. And, and in fact, led, led to legal action and, and, and uh, coinciding with the um, conservative government coming to power. Uh, a, 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 not just a pause, but, it, but in fact a rupture in Neve Brown's career and, and the career of, um, of, of, of a, a number of figures working local authorities in England working on social housing projects. Um, so Kate McIntosh, for example, with George Finch moved away from London. Uh, it, this, the project survived in Hampshire County Council, for example, as, as a kind of school building project. Um, but um, yeah, we, what we haven't done is flinch from uh, quite severe attacks by Rainer Bannum in particular and, and other members of the architecture profession in, and even in the RBA journal, um, which led to Neve having to write uh, a, a response to this um, and, and, and effectively trying to salvage his reputation. I mean, obviously we now know him as the RBA gold medalist and you know, a, a very esteemed and celebrated architect, but for a long period in his career, um, uh, that, that, that wasn't the case. Um, and, and in fact, he kind of didn't seek refuge. But at one point, um, I was told that James Sterling said to him, your career is over in Britain. 
Um, yeah, I think James kind of knew because he'd also been kind of sued by a number of clients. Um, and so um, that David Porter, who had been Neve's assistant at the council, um, uh, continued to work with Neve. And, and, and in fact, what our book has revealed is there's, there's two very fine, quite large scale housing projects in Holland that were built, um, not, not always with their, their, their total involvement all the way through the, the, the process of building. And also um, a, a, a rather excellent, and in fact, quite postmodern housing scheme in, um, uh, near Bergamo in Italy. Um, so, this, so this is the press release for the book, um, which you can read on, on the Canal Side Press website. Um, and, um, and this is the book. This is the thing we've just sent to, to print. It has the printer's marks on it, I'm afraid. Um, it's a hardback book, like uh, the other uh, siblings in, in, in this series. Um, and um, the, th the thing that was revealed by, by, by uh, Rory Galo and, and Sue Bars and others' photographs over the last year or so, um, uh, it, it's, it's quite how much it's possible to think of Alexander Road now as a landscape project. Um, these are the planters that sit beneath the uh, civic ground or public, public level of, 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 of the, the complex. And in fact, I think Neve was very conscious of of this, that he wasn't just building housing, he was building part of a city, as he said in his um, RBA Gold Medal address. So that's in the obvious title for the book. Um, so th th David Porter is a, is a co-editor of, of the volume with, with uh, Claudia, my wife and business partner and I. Um, and uh, the, the book is um, uh, in, in effect uh, uh, a compendium of sources. Our, our, our intention is not to have the final word and not to try to make judgments. Um, I'm, I'm not an art historian and I'm not writing about uh, someone to try to establish my reputation or to, or to um, create one for Neve or, or to trash it. That, that seems to me to be an unfair position to take. Um, what we do have the luxury of, of doing because I have a PhD and I've published a number of books about my own work and now of others is the capacity to create a kind of, um, as I said, compendium or, or portable archive, which hopefully will encourage future scholarship, both, both student dissertations and hopefully PhDs. And also just for, for, for practicing architects to, to gain access to the original drawings, original photographs, original um, critical uh, evaluations. And, um, and that's kind of the, the first part of the book as my introduction. Uh, David's uh, uh, kind of history of, of, of the experience of working with, with Brown at Camden and then in private practice. Uh, Brown's own writings um, and, then, and then projects and project reviews, which include um, writings by people uh, contemporaneous, often friends of, of Brown, Christopher Woodward, Ed Jones, um, uh, Tony McIntyre and, and, and um, Bob Maxwell. And then the second half of the book, as it were, um, deals with uh, critical reflections, including uh, Bob Maxwell's review of Alexander Road and Ditto Rainer Bannon's, and then Ken Frampton, who was a uh, contemporary of, of me, directly contemporaneous, they were in the same year, they, they met on the first day of term, uh, Neve wearing his, um, hadn't yet been demobbed from national service, was wearing his officer's uniform. Um, Patrick Hodgkinson, another contemporary in the same year, a very, very close friend. Um, highly influential actually upon uh, uh, me and, and a whole generation of others, including Adrian Gale, et cetera. Um, Jonathan Sergison, Simon Henley, um, uh, Peter Barber, um, uh, I, uh, architects who I admire, uh, uh, who are dealing with um, questions of housing to, again today in, in the UK. There, there are others, obviously. Um, th these, these architects like me, but also they're kind of teacher architects. Um, and David Evans, who is uh, a partner in our practice, uh, John Zhang, who teaches with um, David Porter at Westminster, and Amy, who, um, who is studying at London Met and, and is working for the Architecture Foundation, who I've just been talking to, who uh, is a young architecture student who visited Alexander Road in the, in the summer and, and posted some very beautiful photographs on Instagram and had, a, I think, a very interesting take on the, um, uh, the spirit of, of, of the place. Um, so, so uh, as I said, this is this is not a definitive account. There are uh, other 
other writers, obviously. Um, Mark Swenerton wrote a very brilliant book about um, Cooks, Cooks Camden, about Stanley, uh, Sidney Cook, quick, quick one, the um, uh, our architect. And, um, uh, and I'm sure there'll be more to follow, um, but, but, but it is what it is. It, it's, a, it's a kind of an anthology or anthos collection of, of flowers and an offering to the world. Um, now, my essay is an attempt to bring together the intellectual threads that uh, exist in Neve's writing and to situate them in relationship to the built work and in relationship to um, work that was being done uh, at the AA when, when Neve was a student in the 50s and the critical uh, firmament, including figures like Theo Crosby, the, the editor of the AR, um, also teaching at the RCA, and a kind of attempt to, to create a kind of uh, context. So, so this is Hodgkinson et al. in Cambridge and Hodgkinson Brunswick Centre in London. Uh, and of course, the, the relationship between a kind of party wall architecture and a, what Neve calls a kind of uh, a commonplace ordinariness of, of, of English um, of modernism. Uh, is, is part of the trajectory that very self-consciously that Hodgkinson and, and Brown saw themselves trying to operate within. Um, and so the, the, Brown, the thing I, I want to emphasize, he was ex extremely self-conscious. He, he gained a, a, a scholarship to study English literature at Oxford and turned it down in favor of architecture, which led to his falling out with his father, um, who refused to support him, thought, you know, why, why, why would you be as mad as to turn down Oxford in favour of, of, of architecture? Um, which led to Neve having to get a, um, apply for a discretionary grant from his local education authority, which, which he was granted. And, and his response was, was, was gratitude, really, and a commitment to uh, repaying his debt to the welfare state by, by building housing. The, the other thing he was doing, I think, which is uh, off of his own bat was he was writing a lot and um, being critical of figures like Mumford who whose dismissal of um, uh, Georgian terraces and squares of Edinburgh as barracks architecture blah 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 um, an architectural architectural front beautiful silks costly perfumes dirty bodies elegance and smallpox out of sight out of mind um, and and a, hagi and a kind of hagiography for, for, for modern functional planning that distinguish itself from this purely visual conception of the plan, dealing by plain honesty and competently with every side, abolishing the gross distinction between front and rear, seen and obscene, creating structures that are harmonious in every dimension, planning for the human organism as a whole. Um, what Neve does very brilliantly is, is, I suppose, what one would now call deconstruct the tacit uh, emotional elision of um, modesty and honor and truth to materials and a very puritanical attitude towards um, decorum and tradition and uh, continuity. And Ken in Frampton in fact suggests that this ability to distinguish between bad metaphors and a kind of moral uh, tone isn't just a literary uh, habit or talent of Brown and skill I mean, it is that as well, but it's also uh, uh, akin to a form of psychoanalysis, and that in fact that derives from uh, the influence of his aunt Margaret, who was a very prominent uh, American psychoanalyst in Paris, and, and then and then and then but belatedly in London, specialising in, in, in child therapy, um, and in fact that Ken believes that it was her influence that enabled um, the young English boy to move back to America um, when he was seven, and then back to England to get, attend Marlborough College as a boarder um, without losing a, a, a sense of self and the, and the type of selfhood that, 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 that Neve is talking about with regards to being able to distinguish between rhetoric and um, facts uh, is a very situational one. And that situational capacity to be both a modern architect and somebody interested in history without becoming a slave to style um, informs um, his approach to uh, being a human being, to being an architect, and to, and to working in cities. And, um, and that's something that David Porter draws out, which is a kind of autobiographical study of, um, of, of the things they were interested in. 
things they were talking about in practice. Um, uh, obviously, there the, were the, a number of British architects at that time drawn to um, the work of Amaralto, which seemed to offer, as Constantine and Wilson suggested, another tradition of, of, of modernism. He was, and he was good friends with James Sterling. Uh, he continued throughout his career to draw um, and to draw both topography and flora and the human body. And I think that's significant um, because as well as the kind of technical detail of a, of a, of a craft, craft-like approach to architecture, there's a highly situational bodily and uh, topographical character to the work, which I think is extremely pertinent to what we're doing today, um, because Nevers are in effect dealing with the problem of the, of the modern city and the motor car and being critical of early Le Corbusier. And instead, I think, um, emphasizing the civic dimension to architecture, that's something that Theo Crosby and Bob Maxwell draw out. Um, so he's, if you like, a postmodern urbanist and a modern architect. And that's something which I embrace as a position myself as an architect. It's contradictory, if you like, or paradoxical, but those types of tensions um, and dilemmas are what we face as practitioners. I mean, modern architecture is fantastic in terms of the way the plan works, but we have to admit often quite disastrous at ground floor level where it's often um, not integrated in this, into the topography, um, as this project is atel by Atelier 5 is in, in Switzerland. But instead, unlike the traditional city, the ground plane of, of, of modern housing was often derived directly from Corbusier's five points. And so it was either car parks or plant or plant and car, and car parks and, and pretty alienating. Um, Neve um, had worked um, at Lions Israel, LS, blah, 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 with um, a, a number of um, his contemporaries, including um, uh, Sterling and Gowan and Al, and uh, wrote about their work. and. Um, drew out connections between Hodgkinson and Al. So there's a kind of, in effect, by simply just revealing the work, threat, visual threads start to emerge. So these are um, Burke and Howard's drawings done when he was a student at the AA before he went to work with, with Norman Foster of, of Brunswick. And you start to reveal a, a kind of secret history of, of, of modernism where it's not possible to, 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 I think, distinguish between what's happening in academia and what's happening in in, in practice, and in, pra in fact, the, the practice is um, highly critical of, of itself. And this essay, I think, is the key um, in which Neve talks about uh, the conflict of values. Um, it, it's for a Japanese journal. I think they slightly mistranslated the title. So, conflict of values within the change of times doesn't really makes sense. But the essay is extremely erudite and interesting. And um, and he reveals a series of doubts about the, the, the modern project um, and tensions, as he calls it, between his urbanistic intentions and the, um, and the demands of individuals, typified by the car and by um, the needs for privacy. And at Winscombe Street, the, the front of the house is a kind of modest and Georgian. The back uh, is oriented towards a shared communal garden. So it's a kind of um, commune. Um, for the form of convivial, uh, uh, private, but shared collective life by private in the sense of their market houses, um, with the capacity for the lower ground floor to be rented out as a, as a separate flat, um, or for the teenagers in the families to use them. So there's a kind of attitude towards the economics of a family, towards uh, a simplified construction. In fact, that the, 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 the lovely paradox is that Neve interviewed each of the, the, the four families that he was building for separately and wrote down exactly their demands and then produced a design. Each of them loved the design for it was perfectly attuned to all their needs. And of course, uh, then he revealed that all the plans were exactly the same. <laughs> There's a kind of typicality uh, revealed, which I think has to do with his political um, his sense of uh, the um, typicality of human beings. Um, these are Subar's photographs taken in the summer of, of one of the flats. Um, and yet again, you see it's kind of both bodily and tectonic and, and detailed and very cheap construction, but also very worldly and, and about the communal. Hence the, the metaphor that I begin the book with, which is Joseph Wickford's uh, description of architecture as a double metaphor architecture and his uh, body and world. Um, Fleet Road, which is the next project, um, kind of evolves that idea, goes up a scale. Um, there are uh, three blocks, um, duplexes, um, and 
the book kind of juxtaposes the original condition, which, which I think led to quite negative criticism in part, and what need planned, which of course took, you know, 30, 40 years of well-maintained landscaping to achieve. Um, this is his own and, and Janet's flat. Um, and of course, a large part of the book deals with Alexander Road, which is arguably his kind of master, great masterpiece. Um, and we, we produced original drawings, um, the, uh, construction plans, planning application drawings, original landscape photographs, and then Sue's photographs from the summer. And, and once again, the, the, the relationship between topography and made landscape. So he's basically working with the section of the city to not dig expensive basements and to park cars within that existing void and to then plant from that. And so the, the, the tension, if you like, between the individual and the collective and is kind of modified by, by, by planting, which creates both privacy screens, but also uh, the capacity for the individual to interact with their environment. And um, this is the later project uh, in Motso, no Bogomo, three blocks of housing. Um, Tony McIntyre's review of it from the AR. It's a very interesting piece of writing. Um, like John Mounier um, and uh, uh, Kate McIntosh, both of whom I interviewed for the, for the Journalist of the Architecture, I'm, uh, I'm constantly surprised at how um, this generation of architects, um, along with Sandy Wilson and Adam Van Eyck, deny any interest in postmodernism, which the work, I think, rather belies. <laughs> Uh, highly geometrically constructed and, and rigorous and there's a real interest in the figurative dimension of, of, of construction and of geometry um, and colour and traditional materials and landscape but um, that's part of the, the role of historian I guess is to just tease out these threads and to make them powerful. Um, this is the project that David Porter worked on with, um, with Neve um, and in fact they resigned halfway through the project. Um, the Dutch were building on a polder of land and reclaim uh, 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 dike, as it were, in the, in the North Sea. They looked at um, the publication of uh, it's Under Road and realized it's basically the same size. And they, they asked me to have a look at it and to think about re replicating it. In fact, the scheme is, is quite different. It's a, it's a, it's a collection of towers uh, with a central uh, arcade connected with retail and um, housing running at the lower level. Um, the setting is absolutely amazing. These are photographs by um, Emma Kalkoven, the, the, the designer of the books, um, uncle uh, Hans Kalkoven, who's an architect and academic in Holland, taken in the summer. Um, uh, and Brown and Porter resigned because it became a design build contract and, and they didn't like what the uh, contractor's architect was proposing to do. Um, and I think it's fair to say David was quite sensitive about us publishing this, but actually, I think it's a really, really good scheme. Um, and, it, and the strategy that, that at play survived the tinkering that, that, that went on in the, in the, the construction process. Um, uh, a less for project was this one in Medina, which Tony Fretton wrote about um, for the architecture today. Uh, it's similar to the double, double and dark projects. I don't know if you know, anybody knows the, the project in Covent Garden and um, the beautiful estate they built for Westminster Council also in, um, in Pimlico. Uh, it, it's effectively a kind of staggered section project planted and um, has both a kind of civic scale and a, and a, and a smaller domestic courtyard scale. I mean, in, in essence, Claudia um, and I have been talking about this a lot. We, we, we just thought, seeing as we are building social housing projects for various local authorities working for the state again, the question is how do we how do we in the kind of interregnum of 40 years post that to right decline of social housing avoid making the same mistakes again how do, how do we avoid the problems of the ground plane in essence putting housing at ground plane was not mediated or putting plant there and and it seems that what what brown was able to do with his dutch clients and italian clients who had kind of rolled modernism and postmodernism into one. So if you look at the work, for example, of Aro Cesar uh, uh, Grassi, um, uh, uh, late, late, late modern architects in Holland and Germany, it doesn't seem to be enough, such, a, such a stark ideological divide between, as it were, um, as Dalibor Vesey 
our teacher would like to suggest. On the one hand, he was faced with, with Leon Creer in the room next to him when he was teaching at the AA. And on the other, the other hand, Peter Cook in Archibald. And that kind of extremism, which I think has, has retarded the evolution of British architecture, isn't the case elsewhere. So I think Neve was, and it's obviously unfortunate that his career at Camden ended, but very fortunate that he found a home for, for his ideas elsewhere and, and made some very, very successful projects. Um, Paul Karakusevich, um, uh, the esteemed housing architect, um, uh, in fact, uh, devoted quite a lot of his time and energy um, uh, as, a, as a practitioner, able to uh, involve himself in research, um, in interviewing Neil. And in fact, he, he purchased Neil's slide library and scanned it. And we've been fortunate enough to use that in, in the book. So we're publishing Paul and his colleague Abigail Bachelor's um, uh, a conversation with, 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 with Neve. Um, and um, sorry, I'm pressing the wrong button. Um, uh, and Bob Maxwell's, I, I think, really very subtle um, criticism of Alexander Road. In fact, what Maxwell says is that um, whilst it's fantastic, the best bits are the bits that um, are evolving over time. So there's a there's a, a, a children's hostel by Evans and Shalev, which obeys the rhythmic structure and rules of, of Neve's, if you like, master plan, but, but has a different architectural character to some degree. And so this question of how uh, the urbanistic character of modern architecture can, can evolve and change in the way in which the Inns of Court and the Georgian city has, I things that um, Hodgkinson and Brown were looking at when they were students is, 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 I think, key both to the English condition that we face in London with typically buildings being party walls typologies, but also uh, a kind of question more generally about the relationship between urban design and, and the individual, which is a political, ecological question. Um, something that, 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 that Jonathan Sosa has been dealing with. I, I mentioned Ken's um, contribution a moment ago. Um, and of course, Simon Henley, who's uh, uh, a, a good friend of mine, he, we were, he was in the year above me at Liverpool uh, a very long time ago remain close friends and of course he's just won the Neve Brown Award for um, his uh, school and housing in Hackney. Um, so, th so these are, uh, are if you like, um, and, and David Evans's um, uh, essay which, which arose directly from a conversation in the studio um, in the summer and that these are your, uh, Amy, Amy's photographs of, of snapshots of, of wandering into the, the estate and being invited in for a beer. Um, and this is Peter Barber's citation when, when Neve won the gold medal. And the book concludes with, with Claudia's um, uh, ob observations. Um, she was uh, born and brought up in East Germany, where um, the, the, if you like, socialist ambitions of, of the state were unified absolutely with, with housing, both because of the need to rebuild following the bombing of Dresden in the Second World War but also an attempt to create a kind of utilitarian, uh, egalitarian utilitarian architecture. Um, and um, so we, we, we noticed one evening having dinner that um, Iggy Pop's passenger, in fact, uh, talks about this type of city in the 1970s, um, where all of it was made for you and me, because it just belongs to you and me. And the book concludes with a pictorial chronology. And photographs of the estate, which is recently the gardens and playground have been um, refurbished by uh, Jane L. Gibbons, uh, landscape architects, colleagues that we're working with, um, who wrote about this, their um, a collaboration with Janet Jack, the landscape architect that worked with Brown in the council. Um, and. Uh, which, which was completed a few years ago, just before Janet died. And so the, the kind of conclusion of the book is that uh, in, in essence, um, Nee Brown has, has an awful lot to teach us, both practically in terms of how to deal with the questions of the car, questions of um, very high density in the city, but also, I guess, uh, kind of uh, questions of the integration of landscape and, and a way of thinking about time in architecture that goes beyond the immediate functionalist understanding of the brief. 
that deals both with spontaneity, so the creation of places for people to meet and to congregate, and, and the, the longer term uh, ambition of architecture to become integrated with, with the natural world, which if you like is a, a, something that I, I think is a really where we are as a, as a profession, where the ecological dimension and the civic dimension have to meld and the kind of asocial individualism typified by the motor car and you know, by, if you like, Reagan, Reaganomics and Thatcherite politics are, are, are no longer sustainable as a, as a social model or, if you will, as an ontological or even spiritual way of approaching the task of architecture. And that really is the portrait of Neve Brown that we're, we're trying to reveal. And um, I conclude my essay um, by talking about the character of beauty um, defined by the uh, uh, French um, philosopher who's now seen as a, as, a, as a very important theologian, Simone Weil, which she sees characterized by the anonymity of beauty. Okay, that's, that's it. I hope you can get along to some of the events um, and, and that you, you, you feel uh, sufficiently interested to, to purchase the book and to write your own dissertation or start your own PhD or make better housing. Please. Thank you very much. <laughs>